All right, what's going on, you guys? We are here on an old R22 leaker. This poor lady's husband just passed away a few months ago. She's having trouble with the air conditioner. I've got to talk kind of quiet. But apparently some other company come out, gassed her up like a month ago, and it's already back down and not cooling. I was on like 30 PSI when I hooked up to the outdoor unit, but thankfully the indoor coil of the door wasn't too hard to get off. I wasn't all taped up and everything. And I've got out the AccuTrack Ultrasonic here, and I found a couple of leaks. Main ones around the feeder tube, right up here. You can see that. If I move away, you know, that goes away. There wasn't anything back in the back. But when I come back over here, when I get closer to that, you see it start going up. So it's right in there. The one underneath it was leaking just a little bit. So I'm getting another little hit there. And then I got another hit down here in this bottom corner. Now that one I can really hear like, sounds like wind. It almost sounds like those videos you hear a hurricane blowing outside the windows and it has that whistling sound. This one up here sounds weird. That one's very strange sounding. But that one seems like the biggest one. So, I've also got my amp probe over here. This is the amp probe. RLD1. This is a pretty good leak detector. I really like this thing. I found a lot of leaks with it. It's good on R22 and 410 both. The thing's quiet while it's running. There's no beeping to annoy you. It only beeps when it finds a leak, so I kind of like that. You've got auto and manual sensitivity. You've got a low, medium, and a high. Low's the green lights. Medium's up to the yellow. High's the red. It's got a pretty nice gooseneck and a tip on it. So we're going to move in here and see what we get. Let's see. So we definitely got one there. And it will kind of give you a visual idea of how big the leak is based on the number of lights that go up. And also I like that the sound of the alert is different. Some sniffers, they just have one level of alert. It goes off the same whether it's a tiny little leak or a huge leak. So you have to visually look on a screen and see a number or a LED or something to let you know. But this one, the beeps actually change from slow to more rapid to solid tone, the bigger the leak is. So I really like that. And, you know, this is a mid-price leak detector. It comes with a nice case and a little vial to sniff with. So see, it's right in there. And that one's going all the way up. And we'll come back in there again. definitely more so on the top left seems like and then down here with another little something this one's kind of hard to get in here but this one was much smaller so definitely something there 
and just so you know that we're not going off just on moisture or random stuff over here is another feeder tube and you see I don't get anything there and then I didn't get anything down here on this one so we're not just randomly going off with moisture right there I am right over the drain pan I got a little tiny something there but I'd say a lot of this refrigerant has settled down in the pan there's probably some oil and stuff down in there but you know when you just get a tiny little beep like that you know that that's either an extremely small leak or just some little trace something floating around you know that that's not really anything massive to be worried about and then right there's another feeder tube down there we're not getting anything there so we go back up here and right there that one's leaking and then our bigger one was up here and there we are good solid tone on that one so this is a nice detector for guys that are wanting something you know it, it feels great in your hand it's a really good size it's got a good size gooseneck on it it's constructed made really well comes in a nice hard shell case it does run on four c cell batteries it has an ac adapter you can't really see it there but you can plug it into the wall if you get it out there and you don't have any batteries you see there's a plug in on the bottom of it so you can plug in and run it off the of AC in a pinch if you need to and it does come with a little leak test vial it's like some cotton and a little glass cylinder that you can sniff with it so I've had a lot of luck with this leak detector I really like it and press and hold power now it's off and I'm going to head up and grab some leak bubbles we're just going to spray this thing down and see if we can see where the leak is Turn my light off up here. This little old rickety outdoor unit sits underneath these condos. This fan has been replaced and man, when that thing's running, God almighty, it sounds like it's just gonna rattle off there. It is an old Duquesne rattle trap. The coil's pretty dirty too, but I gassed her up enough to get her above freezing just so I could check her out and then we're gonna probably just you know gas her up the rest of the way I mean that's gonna get her through the rest of the hot weather here hell it's September that's straight AC she's gonna be switching over to the furnace before long so I just feel bad for her, her husband passed away and I mean she don't need to be replacing no unit right now she can make a move on that maybe next year we'll just tell her that you're gonna have to look at replacing this thing next year and either she will or she won't you know how that goes but for now just due to the circumstances and she's already had some other company come out and gas it up and charge her quite a bit of money she has been a kind of a sporadic maintenance customer over the years of ours Sometimes they have it checked, sometimes they don't. You know, when you got a spouse passing away, sometimes maintenance ain't always on the top of your list of things to do. So I'm gonna try to hit it with a snow pier first. Cause I do really like that stuff. So that little wand goes down inside the bottle like an oiler. You pour it out and pull it out and that way you can kind of put it where you want it. Without spraying everything down and getting all those little small bubbles already formed up and then you don't really know what's bubbling and what ain't. We'll try it with this first and see how it does. I don't know about down in here, but we'll squirt some around in there.
And, you know, leaks on this old stuff is to be expected. You don't mind it as bad when the equipment's old, but man, you get that new stuff, like those Linux units that are only a few years old and they're already leaking. Damn, if that don't make you mad. Especially when they're in a bad spot. Hard to get to. And you hate going and telling your customer that about their brand new unit. So, we got some bubbles coming up right there. It's hard to see. See her bubbling? There. can hear her grandkids running across the floor up above me there. I guess she picked them up from school. So that's good that she's got them to keep her occupied. Because I'm sure that's not easy. Let's see. I'm going to... I brought another little... I've just got a little spray bottle with some soap in it. We'll just soak her down, see what she does. Yeah, this one down here, you can actually kind of see it sizzling coming out of the solder gun. see that so hard to get the camera to focus and get the light just right but right there where you see that white there are tiny little bubbles there's one right there there in the white down on the bottom side you can see tiny little sizzles popping there so I know we definitely got leaks there that leak down there is going to be too hard to get any film on that. And NorCal Dave found one on a unit the other day. It was like a little pinhole coming through a cap. And he soaked that thing up and it was kind of squirting out under his finger. That was a real good find on NorCal Dave. You don't even need a leak detector. He's a human leak detector. This one was somewhere down toward the bottom. Like I said, that one sounded more like an air escaping leak. It actually had a slight whistle to it and kind of wet. So that's probably down at the very bottom right near the pan and the water standing down in there. Maybe you 
you can see those bubbles there a little. Anyway, she's toast. And you can kind of see, you know, a lot of, you know, finding a leak is using your eyes and your ears and just your senses looking at this coil and seeing if there's an area that is kind of standing out. You know, if you've got a coil that's fairly new, like those Linux coils, you know, most of the coal will be kind of silver, but then you find an area that is kind of abnormally rusted rusted more than the rest of it and you can see those trails coming down from where that one was leaking you know that's a little bit of a indication of the leak there when you see stuff like that so anyway thought I'd do a little video on that show you the leak detectors in action there if you're in the market for one and you can't win one from Zach on HVAC shop talk like me you get the questions wrong every time and you can't win your leak detector you just have to go buy one that's a good option because it's in the like the 200 or under price range and it works very well and then the AccuTrack is still really good, man. A lot of times that's my go-to detector. That's the first thing that I grab for. Especially when you've got a big one like this. You know, this leaked down pounds in a matter of a month or so. So you can almost always find them with your ultrasonic. And then, you know, you can get your bubbles or your sniffer and just kind of verify that leak. Right here is the little glass vial. It's filled with like a refrigerant impregnated cottony stuff in there i always just keep that in my tool bag because one thing i have found with sniffers it's kind of a good idea to sort of what i would call prime the pump and especially if the sniffer has been sitting in your van for a while and you haven't used it go ahead and you know take your jug of refrigerant whatever refrigerant your system has in it take your 22 or 410a and don't ever crack that jug open and put your sniffer down to it. Never, ever do that, guys. You will kill your sensor. It won't last no time when you're doing that. Even if you think you've just barely cracked the jug, don't do that. Put the cap on your refrigerant jug, crack the jug open for a second, shut it back off, and then unscrew the cap and move that to the tip of your sensor. All you need is that little trace with a refrigerant to set your detector off. If you can find that, you'll find a leak in a system. But that also sort of primes the pump and it gets that heated dynode kind of primed and ready to go. It passes some refrigerant through there. And I feel that your odds of finding a leak are a lot better that way. And especially if the detector has set on the van and you hadn't used it in a few months. Always kind of prime that thing, put a little trace gas through it and, you know, get it to alert a couple of times. That way you know it's working. And also, it's going to do a better job for you once you get here to the coal and you start looking for your actual leak. So, anyway guys, I will give her the bad news on this thing and see what she wants to do. But it is what we know it is, and that's all that it's going to be. A leaky system. It's never going to get any better. So anyway guys... I appreciate you watching. Leave me a comment below. Like and subscribe. If you have any questions about any of these tools that I just showed and used, let me know. I'll try to answer you back and give you whatever helpful information I can. I always try to respond back to you guys because I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and leave a comment. So anyway, guys, I am out of here and I will catch you on the next one. See you.